In the previous video, we learned the basics of design system documentation and how it plays a critical role in making your system successful by taking the guesswork out of when and how to use it. The final foundation of your design system we have left to cover are the processes. Processes are just as important as the tools and assets within the system. They capture the mechanics and governance for managing a design system. How to make updates to a system and share them with others. Who to give feedback to and how. How to get changes to the system approved. How to collaborate with cross-functional teams. How to provide training to new members of the team and more. It's important to establish these with your contributors before a design system goes live. Remember that your design system is going to grow and evolve over time. These processes will help manage growth as more people use and contribute to the system. Without strong processes in place, the whole system could start to break down. When designers and developers work side by side, your design system benefits. This key relationship influences the success of your design system and the product development process. You can tackle feasibility issues earlier on in the process. You need shorter iteration cycles and fewer design development reviews. So what can we do to make this collaboration more successful? Get developers involved in critiques before you finish designs. Consult developers when you create new components so they can align with related code. Learn to spot limitations. Work with developers to understand your code base and how things work under the hood. Understand the technical requirements and limitations of the assets you're working with. Each team is going to work in different ways. Your developers might use different technologies than developers at another company. Do you have a tip for how design and development work well together at your company? Let us know in the comments. If you don't have processes documented yet, start brainstorming with your team. How do you work together successfully? Try making a flowchart diagram of how your processes work and get everyone's input on it. Did you recently work on a project with developers? Try holding a collaborative project team retrospective to learn what worked well and what didn't. Some of these could become documented do's and don'ts to build a strong culture of collaboration between you and your developers. Maybe invite your developers to host a lunch and learn with your design team to show them around the code base. If you have a process that works great for you and your team, consider dropping a comment so others can learn from your experience as well. Congrats on making it to the end of this section of the design systems course. Remember that for everything we touched on, we're only just beginning to scratch the surface. Things you learned will help you start asking the right questions, but if you find that you're stuck or if you need more guidance, consider seeking out further learning. You can also consider joining online communities and forums to ask new and experienced design systems managers questions you might have so that we can all learn together. If you'd like us to do a deeper dive on any of these topics, let us know in the comments. In the next lesson, we'll learn about the art of building a design system in Figma. See you there!